Hey bookends! Welcome to a 10 minute book review. I'm 10. Today's book review is going to be on Cyberfunk, an anthology. That's by multiple authors. Um, so it was edited by Milton J. Davis and some of the authors of note are uh, I'm just going to read off the authors of the stories that I particularly liked. Uh, Kyoko M. T.C. Morgan. Donovan Hall. And yeah, that's just uh, some of the people that I liked. So jumping right on in, we like to start every book review with a star point. Usually out of 10 stars, how many stars this particular corner, this particular book garner. But because it is an anthology, we will be doing the five star scale. So out of five stars, how many stars this particular book garner? And a rating, as in if this was a movie or a TV show, what would it be rated? So just like with all anthologies, it is a mixed bag. You can get something all the way from Disney G. No Mommy's Dead. Just like Mickey. Mickey Disney G. <clears throat> All the way up to, uh, was it Deadpool? Pierre? Yes. Deadpool's a superhero, right? Uh, the red one? Yes. Okay, yeah. So we have the whole spectrum from uh, Mickey Mouse Club G all the way to Deadpool rated R. So, <clears throat> most anthologies are a mixed bag. Let's just go roll with it. So out of five stars, this book is a solid five. I'm going to tell you why um, later on. Uh, two thoughts so too. So it is a solid five from the both of us. Um, also two for a rating. I'm, I don't want to rate the whole book as an R. So unless an adult is providing this to a child with the stories that I checked off that they can read. I mean, there's only like two or three stories that I think that are really outrageous. When I say outrageous, like a lot of cursing in it um, for no reason. Um, I don't want to rate the whole thing an R. I really don't because of those stories. I'm going to say PG with PG-13. PG-13 with caution. That's what I'm going to say. PG-13 with caution. And I'll let you know the stories that I can remember that uh, were a bit graphic. When I say graphic, I don't mean sexually so. I mean violence and perhaps sex. So jumping right on in. This book is an anthology. Basically, this is supposed to be the future. And it is supposed to take, places, uh, take place in places that would have either people who are in Africa in or descendants of Africans. So either in like Africa, the continent, or... Uh, the different islands where African slaves would have been dropped off on uh, hundreds of years ago and even the different countries where Afri African slaves would have been dropped off. So when you read this book you have to think of uh, Morocco, Ghana, Jamaica, America, Canada. You have to take your mind and put it in these different places and these places are in the future. So it's not current whatever, it's uh, future whatever. And it is based on cyber cyberpunk. Ergo the name cyberpunk. Play on words. So it's based on the cyberpunk genre or subgenre, because this the genre would be science fiction. The subgenre would be cyberpunk or cyberpunk. Um so there's some kind of cybernetics included in every single thing. So to give an example, one of my absolute favorite stories is Comfort by uh, Kyoko M. And that story is about a comfort android, a comfort android. So basically in the future, instead of using people as sex workers, instead of people taking on the role as sex workers, instead uh, these expensive androids are created and they are comfort androids. And their specific purpose is to comfort people sexually um 
what was really nice about this story is first the story itself is not sexually charged there's no sex in the story at all a young lady finds one of these joys who's been badly beaten up now even though they're androids they do have human dna in them so they're an, um, an amalgamation of android and human um, but they're legally listed as android and they're not humans who have had mechanical parts placed into them they were created in this way so they were specifically created for this particular purpose so they don't have new rights so the young lady finds the droid and of course doesn't know what happened to it because it was beaten so badly it lost its memory and she helps to repair it and once it does start to gain back a little bit of its memory it's wary of her because it's like all humans have tried to use me that was my job my my job was to be used no one's ever cared about me no one's ever felt anything for me and the interesting thing is that even though this android singular purpose is to sexually pleasure people it has feelings it has wants it's my it not it doesn't necessarily want that to be its life it just doesn't know what other options are available and the journey kind of goes on from there I want to say that's kind of a love story but it's more so of a friendship that develops so that's very interesting and there's another story that's my husband hacking up a lung in the background it's okay no COVID he just has allergies say hi Pierre Hello. there we go so there's another story where uh, there is someone who is human and mechanical that is the first story I believe a sunken memory by Donovan Hall and in that story um, apparently there was some kind of catastrophic I forget if it was a disease or World War three or, or something something catastrophic happens that kills off a large percent of the human population maybe 90% of the human population and before that happens uh, people download their memories <clears throat> into these banks and so the humans that are around at this point are spending their time looking for these different mind banks so they can download the mind banks into a new body and the person can once again live again the main protagonist in that story he's been doing this for i don't know how long but a long time possibly centuries because fear of death is no longer something available uh, but he generally goes on the most dangerous missions and every time he goes on a mission he unfortunately ends up I don't want to say dying because technically he can't die but he ends up depleting so much energy from his new body that he has to be downloaded into another body or re-downloaded and every time that happens he loses a memory or he loses a part of himself and not just one memory but a chunk of memories and in this story he finds a group of children and living children, human children, not human children memories, not banks, but actual children. And so he makes it his life's goal for that mission to get them back alive, whether he survives or not. He works with this AI that is um, integrated into his sub submarine. I guess a lot of the world is also covered in water as well. But the AI that's integrated into his submarine kind of has a little bit, I don't want to say an attitude because it's not mean or anything like that. Um, but it kind of warns him like, hey, bro, you want, you really want to do this? Because, you know, uh, this could get you killed. And, you know, you really want to, like, you don't even know those kids. But <laughs> he is like, yes, this is what I'm going to do. Override, override, override. We're getting those kids back to safety. So that has, I just want to say it has a happy ending. I'm not going to tell you how it ended or what happened to put him in danger. Uh, but I will say it has a happy ending so you don't have to feel like, oh my god, kids, I don't want to read a story with kids who get her. No, it, it has a happy ending, so don't worry. I will say that most of these stories have a happy ending. I, I want to say that the man who curated these stories, Milton Davis, uh, I want to say that he did a pretty good job at curating stories that either have an engaging ending, uh, an ending that makes you want to pick up the next book, should there be a next book, or a happy ending which makes you feel like contented where it stopped like if you never heard anything about these characters again in your life 
you'd be contented in your head with where they ended up at. So that was that was really good. That was wonderful. Um, the Walker's Alchemist by T. C. Morgan. So that's an interesting one as well. So the main protagonist himself is not a cyborg. So the main protagonist really doesn't have a lot to do with cyberpunk. Uh, but the world around the main protagonist has a lot to do with cyber funk and ergo cyber punk. So uh, the main protagonist, Alistair Lehman, um, is an alchemist. And in his time period in Morocco, alchemism is al outlawed by the chief of their kingdom. So the chief of Morocco says, alchemism, no. Alchemists off with their heads. So Alistair is beheaded <laughs> and um, a cyborg who is the lead walker. So if you're not familiar with walking, um, there is a African tradition in some tribes where to bury the dead, there's someone who walks the dead, uh, like walks them to their grave. And this cybernetics are used to walk the person to their grave so there is this person who's a cyborg they're human and they have certain things implanted in them and because they have these implants inside of them they're able to use these nanobite nanobots nanites something like that um insert it into the dead person's body it they're able to use the nanites inside the dead person's body to turn the dead person into kind of a puppet and they're able to marionette the person to where they're going to be buried which essentially is a large fire pit at the end of town at the edge of town um so not to give too much away but the cyborg's wife there's this big uh, virus going around and it's killing a lot of people and the cyborg's wife is working on a cure for it and unfortunately she ends up passing from it he figures okay I am a walker. I can walk the dead, so maybe I can revive the dead, possibly. Who knows? Can't hurt to try. So her body was brought to the castle where all the bodies are housed until he works on them. He was able to get her body out. Now, as I recall, his wife's name is Ama LaRue, and Alistair's name is Alistair Layman. So he got his wife's body because, of course, he knew who his, body, his wife's body was. He knew what she looked like. But when someone dies, they also remove the inside so they can embalm them. So they hadn't embalmed her as of yet. And uh, the cyborg sees a jar labeled AL. And he believes that the AL is for Ama LaRue, his wife. As it turns out, the brain that he puts into the body isn't Ama LaRue's. So he got the correct organs uh, for the other cavities but the brain that he ends up getting is Alistair Lehman's brain so Alistair Lehman awakes in this woman's body who's married to a cyborg now mind you Alistair Lehman is an alchemist and alchemists are all about the alchemy like they don't have familial relationships they don't have romantic relationships they don't even have really friendships they are literally all about the alchemy all about the science so not only is he now a woman he is a married woman with a child and it is like whoa so um i don't want to give any away any spoilers with that but basically he has to navigate life now as a woman and uh the cyborg has to navigate life with this man who's in his woman's in his wife's body helping him to raise his child and there's this big thing now oh, i don't want to give too much away i will say that alistair layman had just become a master alchemist he had just received his master alchemy whatever from his master um and his master was a horrible person and some events happen in the story that lead alistair to believe his master is behind an even bigger plot or an even bigger plan so originally Alistair's master was trying to experiment on children on a smaller scale but some things happen that lead Alistair to believe that he is trying to experiment on people on, on a larger scale and 
yeah there's a mm, there's a there's a lot going on and that story is really interesting um i think there's actually going to be like a novel or something based on that story so yeah that that's really interesting uh one of the some of the stories that are a bit a bit uh whew, you might if if you're not into like rated r stories like i'm not into stories that curse thought you might want to stay away from uh, there is one that is Sodom Sen Sensory Cortex Dog mess you up big time you sick sack of sugar honey by Minister Faust so that's that's one you're gonna want to stay away from if you're not into the stories that curse a lot uh, there was another one too I forgot. I know there was one that was. Hmm. I I forget. Maybe it's this one. Let me just check this one really quick. Late was it Leilai? Let me just check that one really quick. So I honestly can't tell you whether the story or not is the story itself is good or not. Um, I can just tell you that there was a lot of cursing and so that turned me off, and I wasn't interested. Um. I can't tell you if the story was worth reading or not because it was just so much. There was another one too. I cannot find it. But I will say overall, the main drag of the anthology isn't a lot of cursing and it's definitely not extremely or exorbitantly graphic in any way. I'm sorry, I thought, I thought my cat was doing something. Anyway, it's not exorbitantly graphic. Um, it's a good read. We gave it a f uh, five stars, both of us, just because for the most part, you're never in a mixed bag. You're never going to love every single story because not every single author is going to write what you want. Just like at a buffet, you're not going to love every single food item because not every single food is going to have ingredients that either agree with you or taste good to you. But if the buffet overall has a lot of good options and most of them are ones that you like, or at least the ones that they made that appeal to you tasted good, then you're going to rate the buffet as good. And so most of the stories in here were pretty good and we enjoyed them. Yeah. So once again, this has been a 10 minute book review for Cyber Funk. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Bye, bookends.